All right, guys. Uh, I'm Tyler Turner. Just to give you a little bit about me. Uh, I've been making for six years now. Don't sound like much, but uh, uh, when I got started, made a lot of fixed blades to start with. Got bored with that. Started working on frame locks just for something different to do. And uh, having known what I know now, I should have stopped and asked questions to somebody, but I never did. So I wasted a lot of time and material and everything else learning these things. Um, when I should have just stopped and asked somebody for help to begin with and it had been better off. But, so anyway, um, get started. Once you have your design locked down, so you got you know everything done, I do mine all on paper. I'm old school, I'm not good at computers. And so if I need to have it done up on CAD, you know, there's tons of people out there, you can just give them a call. I send my blueprints to them if I need to do that. So what I do then, you'll get your so you've got your template set up, just like doing a fixed blade or something, lay your template over your knives. And uh, what I do, I do the, you'll take the titanium surface grind it if you can. Make sure it's flat to start with. The folders, everything has to be flat and parallel to work right. If it's, if it's not, you know, your action is not gonna be there ever. I surface grind my titanium with a stone. Um, and the only way I can do that is I parallel it up on a magnetic chuck, just block it in with parallels. But then I got my surface grinder with a VFD. You can turn that thing down to half speed and you just take a couple tenths at a time and it doesn't warp on you. If you try to get too angry with it, that stuff will curl like a banana on you. So you just gotta be real gentle with it. So you're, with your parallels, it's front and back. Yeah, all over. I block the whole thing. Some guys, use, some guys use a carpet tape. That double side carpet tape, it works great for, you know, but I just, I've never had any trouble with the parallels ever flying off or nothing like that because you're going easy. Yes, sir. What kind of surface grinder do you use? I got a little brown and sharp 510. It's a manual. Uh, that's what I use. It's just, just right for folders. And you run the stones? Yes, stones. Yep, yep. I don't have a belt. Some guys use belts um, on their folders. I do not believe in that as very much. Um, because what ends up happening with, with, you end up rounding off the front edge and the rear edge. You end up, because the rubber has to give where a stone doesn't, you know. So everything on your blades, it should be with a stone that surface grind. So after you get everything straight, um, center punch your, your uh, everything on your template for your liners. Then what I do then is super glue them together with the like uh, Loctite gel seems to work you know very good and hold good and then I will drill out the this for the standoffs or your backspacer you'll drill them with a 48 to start with and that's if um, you want to use a or a 43 excuse me 43 bit and that's a clearance hole for a 256 screw number 43 that's if you're wanting to use standoffs drill that then I spot the stop pin hole with a 16th inch bit just go all drill all the way through and then the pivot hole I do it last and I always use 3 16 pivots for everything that's just what I found I like to use and my stop pins I use 8th inch stop pins you're not going to break it some guys use big ones if you're going to break an 8th inch stop pin you're doing something you don't need to be doing anyway um, so get that all drilled and then ream your stop pin hole and I'll lap them even with a barrel lap to get, because you want that super tight. Um, get that done, break, break them apart then. Break your scales apart. Your blade, uh, get your blade put in your scales. You'll, you'll drill, your, drill your hole for your, your pivot. And then like I said, lap, lap that, your hole, it needs to be in a, with a barrel lap. And it needs to be lapped to where you put your barrel through your you, through your hole in your knife, which this is a bad example. This is some junk that I messed up back in the day, but I just wanted to have this for reference. But you want, especially, this is especially crucial if you're gonna build your knife on washers. Washers are, are a whole nother level of tolerances compared to bearings. You can be off a lot with bearings and your knife will still work great. But washers, that's not the case. But with washers, you wanna be able to put your barrel through there, your pivot, and then push your finger on the back and hear that pop, that suction, that, that's, a, that's a good, you know you've got it reamed 
well and tight. Yes, sir. Do you have one of the barrel laps that you use? Tracy you, has. And I'll show that this afternoon. Yes, no, I forgot to, to bring one of those up. And, and th those are barrel laps. It takes a long time. You got to be patient with it. That you might spend 20 minutes lapping or more. We'll cover them this afternoon. Lapping. Um, then after you get uh, that lapped, uh, and if you're going to use a thumb stud, make sure you drill your hole for your thumb stud. Or uh, if you use if you're licensed for spider hole or whatever, do that now. And then I do everything hard afterwards. I do not mess with the blade at all when it's annealed. So uh, I'll get that done, and then I'll put the knife together, and without any stop pin or anything. And in the meantime, you need to. I got the stop pin pressed in. But where you spotted the 16th inch hole in your liners from the outside, go in and you'll have to drill and then ream for the stop pin. And I usually, 100 thousandths for the most part is how deep you want to go. That's just a good, good number where you get a lot of good engagement for your stop pin. Um, then, so then you'll put the knife together. And then what I do is get everything put together and then figure out your open location where it looks good where you want it in your hand tighten down your pivot just crank it down and then put it in your drill press and then just drill through the frame and just spot spot the hole on your blade and then do the same thing with your closed position now the way I set my detents um, whenever you set your closed position make sure you give yourself plenty of room between the edge and the your backspacers or your standoffs that you're going to be using, be it, be it barrel standoffs or making your own backspacer, make sure you give yourself plenty of clearance because uh, how I set my detents, you'll run into trouble if you don't give yourself clearance between that. So after you get those locations done, go ahead and drill, drill through with the, your eighth inch bit and then ream it, whatever. After that, then I go and I'll Full, uh, heat treat the blade after that. Heat treat it and then one main key uh, is whenever you go to do this uh, make sure you clean up your open and stop locations after heat treat. Th that's crucial because you'll get excited to go start try to set the detent and then you'll have to set then you'll clean these up later and then your detent will be junk. It'll wipe everything out that you just done. Then you're starting over again, or you're making step stop pins, and it doesn't. It ain't fun when you get to that point. Um, so after you get out of uh, heat treat, like I said, go ahead and clean up the locations, and then uh, then you're ready for cutting your lock bar. And there's several. There's different ways of cutting lock bars. I have a a uh, slide vise that goes that's attached to my drill press and it's kind of on a slide system I can just move it and I just clamp my my blade up in there and you already have your holes marked where your your lock bar is and I use a Dremel Arbor and a, a 409 disc they're uh it's a 132nd uh or it's 30 second uh thickness of the of the uh disc I like a real thin uh lock bar cut out some guys use 16th it, it's just whatever you prefer and then you just move that along, be real careful, cut that out, and cut your top out then after that. And once you get that done, then it'll be time to relieve your liners for, for your lock bar. And I've, I've done it without a you know, mill back in the day before I had one. You can, you can build one of these without a milling machine. It takes a long time, but you can do it. Um, the magic number that I've found, and this is pretty much industry standard for the thickness your left is around 48 to 50 thousandths is, is the thickness of your lock bar right right in this cross section right here that's what you want to leave about 48 to 50 thousandths thick and that's right where it pivots yeah yes that, that, that's that's where you'll set the bend at right there that's where you'll set the bend that's what sets how much tension is you know forcing up against your blade your detent ball against your blade and it's you, know, you need to be careful of what end mill or whatever you're going to use because this back radius, the, the radius of your end mill is going to determine how stiff your lock bar is too. So you, there's different ways to do this. This one I stuck in the mill like this, milled 
went through here like this. Other guys, they'll come through with a, with a corner radius end mill and leave it flat, you know, and there's just, there's all, there's a bunch of different ways to do these and you'll, and you'll just have to play with and find what radius you like because even though you might have this at say 48 thousandths, but if you use a big, a big uh, end mill, it creates a, you know, a big radius and it's going to be stiff. So you're going to have to kind of play with that ratio for of, or uh, your end mill is what you like. The length, the, the width of that relief? Yes. It doesn't play as much as even the, the radius? No, the, 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 the width isn't so much as more as the, as, of, the, of the radius where, it's, where your cut starts basically because your, your cross section's thicker there, you know, with a bigger radius. Um, so then, okay, so then once we got that, we have that uh, covered now and we're ready to, the blade's cleaned up, open and stop locations are cleaned up. I still haven't ground the blade yet. I don't grind the blade till the lockup's done, detent's done, everything, because I found I wasted more time and money um, when I started. I'd have the gr blades ground to perfect plunge is perfect everything I'd heat treat it then I'd have to clean it back up then if the stars wasn't aligned I'd be fighting the damn blade and then I'd go and mess up the detent and then I had all them belts time everything so I don't even touch the grind till after the mechanics are done and it's saved me a lot of time and heartache <laughs> to boot so now you're ready to start setting the detent and this is one of the most crucial things on a frame lock liner lock and depending on what style of knife you're doing, be it a flipper or a thumb stud, those are going to be set up totally different. The flippers need to have a very powerful detent. If you if you set if I set uh, one of my knives up for a flipper and then put a thumb stud on it, most all of you would probably not be able to open it at all with a thumb stud. It's just it's too it'd rip your skin off. It's too much. So um, so how I come up with the, my way to set detents. His normal, if you watch videos, most everybody will take the blade, put everything together, then they'll put a zip tie around it. They'll just sque over squeeze it, they'll over tighten the blade so it's going past a little bit. And then that's how you get an offset because what you want is your, I'll see if I can draw this, but your lock bar, something like that. Okay, then there's your detent hole. Well, when your blade, let's see if I can do this, comes down, terrible illustration, but okay. So your blade got the same hole in it. What you want though is it grabbing just off the apex. You don't want that ball seating completely in the hole. If, you, if it is seating completely in that hole, you'll be able to take your knife when it's closed and then it, it'll just go like that. It'll just rock and rattle and it, it's, it's no good. So you, you have to grab it right over the apex and that's what keeps that sucked in hard and gets that good action. So I could never find a good way to keep, to really dial in the, the detent of doing the zip tie thing. You could never get enough pressure one time where you get it. In. Yeah, yeah, the regular stop in. pin. Yep. Not closed, and then you're forcing it in, so you're just trying to you're find the over. You're, yeah, you're you're so over hard. over forcing that to try to make that offset. But I could never, you could never repeat it. You know, you could never get it tight on this one as much. Or if you had a a, a knife that was had had a longer blade, well, it's more leverage. You know, so so the way I finally figured out how to repeat it was I always run an eighth inch stop pin, so one two five stop pin. So what I did though was finally started thinking like a machinist and I got a 122 and a half thousandth gauge pin. And these are, uh, if you don't not familiar with gauge pins, they're just a cylindrical dowel pin that's certified to that specific uh, dimension. dimension, yes. So go ahead, get your gauge pin, put it in there, assemble it, just close your knife, nice and easy, you know, sitting on the stop pin, crank it all the way down, then Excuse me, I might got ahead of myself. Hold on a second. Okay, we have to establish the hole in your frame lock first. And how I do that is put your knife, put your pivot in your barrel like this, 
And then what you need to do is die cam the, the front the with layout fluid, die cam the left front of the lock bar here. Die cam that up. Lay out with layout fluid. And then take your knife blade, assemble it like that, and then take a razor blade and swing that knife and scribe that. Scribe that path. And then when you get that scribe done, you'll have a mark like that of of the path of where their knife is. Everything on the outside of that is bad. Everything on the inside is good. So everything on the inside of that scribe line, you are good to place your detent ball. So you're ensuring that it does not run off the track somewhere is what you're doing there. And a general rule what I've done is 75 thou down from the lock from the lock bar lock face, 75 thousandths down, 75 thousandths over. Sometimes it doesn't work that way depending on just the geometry of your knife and how it is. But that gives you plenty of meat to where you don't press in that detent ball and then swell this face out because it will swell. If you get close to 50 thousandths or something, you'll pucker that thing out that much and, it, it, and you will do it very easily. So once you have, then go ahead and once you've got that established, I drill it with a 55 thousandths drill. And, uh, uh, 55 thousandths and I always use carbide that's just what I that's what I use the blade's hard now. yep because the blades hard now already so drill through that and then you got that established then now it's time to drill your hole in your knife blade you assemble it with your gauge pin close it tighten it all the way up fully tighten to where you cannot move that blade out <coughs> out at all go in drill and what I do when I put this in the in the drill press press on the lock bar down so it's kind of against the blade because that's the orientation it's going to be setting after it's all done anyway because it's going to have that pressure against it so that that's your orientation what you need to do so just just press down on it and like I said carbide you got to be very careful with it go ahead sir so you want to back to like the pre-sprung position right you, so you bent it a little bit no not yet no I have not bent it yet I I just just push down with it with my finger as I'm going to spot spot the blade yes 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 um, and the carbide bits you need to spin them fast and be careful you know if they bend they break so but just spin it fast and be careful you're not this, this ain't a race so once you get that hole spotted in your blades take take it back all apart and then I generally try to drill through about 40 thousandths deep with the the 55 drill bit. I think I got that wrote down. Some guys drill all the way through. 55 drill bit? Number 55. Yes, that's what you want to start out with, but regardless of it if it's a a flipper or a thumb stud. Start out with a number 55. Um, then let's see here. Okay, after I get that done, I'll drill drill in about 40 thousandths deep. Some guys drill all the way through. They call it a bit vent. <laughs> you know, it's so it's so dirt and stuff don't go down through it. Pardon my language, but that but that's what some guys drill all the way through. It's it's kind of preference, what, whatever you like. I've never had any trouble with, you know, my detent not ever working and getting stuff in there. I'm a farmer, you know. So, yeah, go ahead, sir. Um, do you spot drill or sec center drill your holes before you because like 55 is that's a really small mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. drill bit yep so are you no just the center punch mark or? No, no there will only be a center punch so mark in the blade point, you're going through the liner yeah so okay. that's kind yeah, of, yeah that's, that's going to hold your right. bit from do, walking and doing weird things so you're just going down and barely touch and that carbide it, it'll dig in quick you know so you're center punching your lock when you go through your lock bar. Center punch in the lock bar, yes, yes, yes. Take a center punch and center punch that out, yes, very much. Um, so once once you then you drill for your detent, then put that together and put your knife back together and check, check your detent, see if you like it or not. And there's ways to get a stronger detent without making more force on your lock bar. So you need, then one, one, before you get your blade put together, I got ahead of myself, bend your lock bar. It's time to bend lock bar. I heat up my lock bars with a map torch or propane torch. Once titanium's heated and bent, it's infinite. 
It, never, it won't relax, it won't, it's not like a pop can. It won't, it won't pop tab, it won't ever break. So I'll heat that up and generally I bend it about an eighth of an inch for the most part. An eighth of an inch, the, where the, if you all can see this, where the, the face of the lock bar is about dead even with the inside of that, you know, flushed out like that. That's about how far I bend my lock bars. Yes, sir. Uh, just a quick question. Yes. You say you're, you're heating the titanium with propane. Yep. Uh, how hot? Uh, get red. Get, 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 really yeah, get red. Yep, yeah. just get it red and then you can just push it real nice and easy over with a stick. And like I said, to that, that, that far. Air, air hardens and then it's yeah, 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 it'll never relax on you. Right. Yep, yep, you. yep, it'll never relax on you. It'll always stay there. Um, and like I said, you, you, you be really careful on your, your lock bar. You know, it's, it's really easy to get these things too stiff. It's very easy to get them too, too stiff, very easy, um, when they don't need to be. If, and if it's too stiff, go to put it back in the mill. I've had to do this before and take off two thousandths. And it don't sound like much, but it does make up that much difference. It does make it just that much easier. So you get this thing, put it together then. And if you do not like the action of it, if you think the detent's too soft, you know, you can shake it out. It's just way, way too soft for what you want. Then what you need to do, if you have good lock bar tension and you know, you know, you have really good lock bar tension there, then what you do is if you need, need to strengthen that detent, you go back to your drill press and then drill it out with a 59 and a half thousandth drill bit. And what that does, it opens up that hole just enough more to catch more of the detent ball, to let it go down seat further in there. And then it will stiffen your de detent up more. You can, go, you can go up, step it up to a 16th inch, you know, if you don't like it even from there, you can step it up from there. So you, you can drastically change your detent strength by just drilling that detent hole out in your blade just ever so slightly. You're not like chamfering, no. countersinking, no. or anything like that. You just a straight hole, you just go to a bigger hole and punch a, a new bigger hole. Yes, 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 yeah. No, no chamfering, no, 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 nothing like that. Nope, nope. Countersinking or boring, no, nope. Just go straight back in with a 59 and a half thousandth. And I found 55 thousandths drilling through for uh, you know how you start that's perfect for a thumb stud that is about as that's what you want for a thumb stud 59 is is uh more set up for a flipper that's more set up for a flipper action um so then so, uh, you, i'm sorry uh, is that 50, uh, number 59 or 59,000 59,000 yes you're using yes. a 116th d10 so and that's going to be 063 so a 59 thou hole is going to be, you know, it'll just let it sit a little yeah. proud. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your detent balls, this is a big thing. Tracy does his different. I do mine different. Les probably does his different. Everybody's got their own systems. Like I said, you'll find what you like the best. But I use a 16th inch ball. And whenever you go to press the detent ball in your liner, I take a just a set of I have a hardened drill rod that I put in the a drill press hardened drill drill blank put in there and I lay a set of uh, feeler gauges down on top of the bar lock bar set your ball in there press it down you want to leave around 26 to 28 thousandths of stick out of stick out of the ball that that pushes it past center and then it gives you a lot of meat still left over and you'll have to readjust because even a hardened drill blank that detent ball will put a dimple in that hardened drill blank and it'll you'll so you'll have to take out shims and adjust it and push it on down further one thing with the detents it, it will really help you out to have a more smoother action i flat spot my detents um so this and this is this will not make sense to start with but so you you got all this pressure pushing over on your blade and it's on this little bitty detent ball. Well, all that pressure, and, it, you're, and especially if you run ceramic, that's hard, you know, I mean, you're, you're talking very, very hard ball. And you're putting all this pressure and it's running just on an apex. I mean, I mean, all that pressure. And so you might feel that thing drag and stuff. Well, that, 
that ceramic's gonna dig in. It's, it's and depending on your blade. Sometimes it won't, sometimes it does. If I use carbon steels, most of the time I won't even mess with a, a ceramic ball. I'll use a 440C ball is what I use. Just, I, cause I don't wanna risk uh, that digging a track in with the ceramic balls. And I've never really noticed much of a smoothness difference uh, from a 440C ball to a ceramic. I have built a lot of frame locks, liner locks, and I have, it's pretty nominal, you know, the difference you can feel. Um, but what do you use personally for stainless steel? Stainless steel, yeah, the 440C balls, those, those work great. I, I can't ever tell much difference. Some, you know, in some people, it just depends on the build. They like the warm, fuzzy feeling of, they have a ceramic detent. You know, it's, it's just how it is, you know. Um, so it's whatever you want to use. But, so back to the flat spotting, uh, if you're getting a little drag on your blade, it's just not as smooth as you'd like it to be, and you, and you know you have your tolerances there between the thickness of your blade and your washer thickness to your uh, standoffs, your backspacer you're using. If you're running bearings, you can be seven thousandths off from this thickness to this thickness, and it's still gonna work. It's still gonna flip. You know, it might not be the most perfect action, but it's still gonna work. If you try to do that with Foster Bronze washers, it will not even function. You'll, you'll get it to here, and it will stop. You're, for a washered knife, you're only allotted about a half a thousandth uh, tolerance between here and here of, of having that perfect smooth glass action without it binding or nothing. About a half a thousandth is what I've found to be the case. That's, so washers are a whole nother setup. I mean, that they really do take a lot more time and patience to do. So the detent ball, by flat spotting that detent ball out, it, it doesn't make sense because you think you're putting more uh, surface area and it's gonna grab more, but, but what it's doing, it's spreading the weight out. So with a, with a 440C or a ceramic ball, either one, I take a, just a little a diamond uh, tool from a Dremel and just go right over the top of that ball just by hand, or you can put it in a drill press or whatever and plane it off, but just flat spot the top of that. Just make a nice flat spot, get rid of that apex and it'll make all the difference in the world on your feel of your knives, of your action, um, opening and closing both. Because um, if you don't have a smooth action, you're never gonna sell one. You know, it's just, it's gonna be, you gotta have that smooth action. So you're 26 to 29 thousandths, your detent is sticking, sticking that out. up uh, yep, that yep, far, yep. and then you flat spot it. <coughs> then you flat spot it. And, and how much are you taking out, a couple grand on that? It, you're probably talking maybe three, thousands maybe you know you're just you're just getting rid of that apex yeah 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 you're just getting rid of that apex so okay now once you've established you've got the blade opened up to the detent hole how you want it and everything you've got your your detent set you're happy with it time to grind the lock face now everybody's got their own different styles of doing this what I do is die cam the your blade put layout fluid on your blade put your knife together open it up and then take a razor blade and scribe scribe on at the very face of this lock bar right up against the very very face of the lock of the lock face right here scribe across your blade then take your knife apart and I grind my faces flat some guys do radiuses, some guys do four inch wheels, some guys use two inch wheels. I use a flat platen whenever I go to grind my lock face. So the, I'll see if I can draw this backwards. So here's your, say so here's your belt right here. That's your belt and here's your work rest. Here's your work rest. I leave, I have a non-moving work rest on my KMG grinder. Just, it stays there. I made a made work rest about that big. I like big work rests. And so I tilt my platen uh, to nine degrees. That's what I found for the length of my lock bars for my knives. Nine degrees is about the magic number for lock faces. Sometimes you're gonna have to adjust depending on lock bars. 
my lock bars, I try to keep it around two and a quarter for the most part, how I design them. Two and a quarter inches is where I like them to be at. If you get in to start getting into shorter lock bars, you know, you're under two inches, inch and three quarters, you're probably going to have to change your angle to up to 10 to 11 degrees maybe. It, it just changes with your lock bar depending on how long that is. So uh, get your, get your uh, platen tilted to nine degrees and I always go in to start with to rough, rough this out with a 120 grit belt is what I start at. And what I do, I'll, I'll get my, say right there's my scribe line for my lock face. Okay, I'll get that set up and then what I'll do to try to, so I can repeat it, I'll set up a, a, a square or one, two, three block or something and clamp it to my, my work rest. Then that way I can put, set, put that up against that square and then I can re repeat that, I can approach that belt the same every time because you're going to have to take this and put this together a million times and so you're going to want repeatability, you're going to want a way to put that back on there and, and to hit that. Now there's, there's a uh, way to grind these. Um, this, this, okay, as a knife sitting here with the blade up, this would be the top of your lock face, the very top. This is where you want all the lock up. You do not want your lock bar engaging the whole entire face of this. Because what will happen is if you're fully engaging this all the time, you're probably going to be maybe more heavier on the bottom or top or so on. You're going to develop lock rock. You're going to develop lock rock. It's going to stick more and you're going to have to, it's a pain in the butt to redo re all that. So what you need to do is whenever you go to grind this, set this at around one to three degrees offset. You, so you want to grind everything on the top. So what you're doing, you're basically making a triangle with your, with your uh, there's a point here, a point here, and then a point here. You got your detent, your pivot, and then your lock, lock up. The further you can get everything away from each other, the stronger it's gonna be, right? So you want to have all that lock up on the very up here. You don't want that grabbing down here. So what you'll do is you'll go in and start touching it off on your grinder and then and then pull it away. Look at it. Look and see if you're getting closer, grinding closer to your top or your bottom, you know, and then adjust your your one, two, three block or your stop, whatever, adjust it a little more, grind it in a little more. And then and then then that way you know you're gonna be getting all your lock up at the very top. Okay, so this is always a puckering thing is the lock lockups. So get in, grind, get get up to that scribe line, just barely get to that scribe line. Put your knife together. And I always have one frame here and then and then the stop pin and I always kind of fit and you and you'll you'll grind this thing, you'll put it in there, and then you'll go, oh, the, the lock bar will go clear over. Well, it's not put together, don't worry, it'll be fine but put it together and if it doesn't open, if it doesn't lock up when you just cycle the knife open and, and like that, if it don't open, if you gotta slam it, or it, it, it's not there yet. So go back to your grinder, go back and you're gonna do this a lot because you're gonna be scared. It, it's just, it's a tedious thing. And then I switch out my belts at that point to like a 400 to a 600. I switch out my belts because that 120, boy, I mean, you'll be all of a sudden two to 5% lock up, which is nothing. Then all of a sudden you're at 80 and then you're making step stop pins and you're, <laughs> you're having a bad day. So uh, go back in, grind some more. And whenever that, whenever that will just barely catch, whenever that lock bar, whenever you can open that up and it'll just Engage like that, stop right there. Just stop. Don't go anymore. Don't get greedy. Think, ah, it's, too, it's, it's not enough. You're, go, you're, gonna, you're gonna hurt yourself because you're gonna grind too much. 
put it and then so at that point stop carbonize your lock face you all got to know what a carbonizer is what I got I don't that you can buy straight carbonizers that are just made for carbonizing what I got is a power source for anodizing aluminum or titanium whatever I got a power source and turn it up to around 40 volts and hook it to a uh, at a little electronic engraver, like a Dremel, just a little engraver. Take you a piece of tungsten carbide, I TIG rod. Take a piece of tungsten carbide, 2% thoriated, and I grind a flat spot on it, and you, you'll put it on your, uh, put it back in your Dremel tool, attach your negative on your, on your frame side, and then attach your positive to the tungsten on your Dremel. And then go in, and turn turn on your your the vibration of it. Turn it on, and it, it'll it'll deposit tungsten carbide into that lock face. Because if you try to if you try to leave that alone, you're going to destroy your frame lock because that titanium is going to gold so bad. You're going to have to use a screwdriver to pry it open. It will never it will never uh, work hardened by that way. If you do not have a carbonizer or a way to carbonize. There's one other way you can do this to uh, get fight lock stick is you can heat up this, this lock face and turn it, I mean, you're going to turn it cherry red. You're going to be really careful not to, you know, mess up your detent stuff like that. But you can turn that cherry red and let it cool and it'll blacken. And once that blackened, it gets a oxide, a black oxide on there and it's super hard. It's very, very hard. <coughs> and that will combat your lock stick um, by doing that. A lot like cooking the lock? Yeah, yeah, basically. And you're just doing that once? You, 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 you might have to do it a couple times to get it to that, that black, to get that black oxide on there. I'll show a carbonizer this afternoon. And yeah. Uh, Les normally cooks his locks and he'll do it two or three times. Yeah, yeah, like I said, there's different ways to do this and it, it works great both ways. So to do that, I mean, with especially with the stainless pan uh, uh, ball, you're going to wreck your ball oh, from the ball. You yes. Knock it out. And knock put it it out. Again. Yeah. And then you put can it back remove in. your detent. Just poke it out from the other side. Yes. And That's hook it and then pop your detent back in. And the titanium will stretch enough that it'll go back and it'll, you'll be able to seat it. You won't have to try if, to seat it deeper. It, no, it, it, it'll be fine. It, it'll go back. Yeah, you can, you if, if you it run two, three times. Okay. If you run into any trouble with it, not seating good, and you don't feel like it's grabbing well, stake it. Go in with a, uh, like a, micro nail punch and you'll stake that around that ball and you'll what it does you'll swell that you know what I mean go in there with a little small center punch and you can stake that and that will d ensure that 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 material is forming around that and you won't have any trouble with that ever falling out yeah because you're past center so there's a little gap a micro gap that you can yes get yes and you can stake that and that's uh, that leads me to another good point always drill through these some guys don't I, I, I recently taught a, taught a guy down at my shop here a couple months ago, and uh, he said, man, that, that'd look just a heck of a lot better if you didn't uh, draw all the way through that. And we got on another tangent. Well, I got ahead of myself, and I drilled out. I can't remember how I did it, but I ended up having to press it out. And I said, that is why you do that, <laughs> because you, you, you'd be making a whole new frame that, you know, if, if regardless. So just just drill it out and you'll be good to go there. Um, so now that you got the, the blade carbonized and all that stuff, it's uh, got your action good. And generally I try to set my lock up and after you get it carbonized, play with it, open it, open it, open it, open it, just keep, and you're gonna, you're gonna make everything break in and wear into itself because there is a break in period on these. And especially if you got washers, a, a knife on washers, they have to be broken in. You're going to open and close and open and close, and and they just finally work hard, and and all of a sudden it'll it'll feel like crap forever, and then all of a sudden it'll just be smooth. It'll it'll be smooth. Um, then after that, uh, I try to set my locks my my engagement at around 25 to 30 percent of the bar coming over and engaging the blade. 25 to 30% is kind of where I like to set them. That's not extremely early lockup to where people get nervous. It's not catching too much, but it's not at that 50% stage where 
I don't, you know, it, it, it's just, it's a mind thing, isn't it, isn't it Tracy, you know? It, it is, it, and it, I try to go half, I just like it, half. Yeah, it's just, like I said, pe people set them up different, it just, it's, yeah. it, it is what it is. So you're talking half, the, the lock bar goes to half the blade. Half right? the so blade, yes. Your engagement on the blade, there's yep. two ways you can talk about it. You can talk about how much of the, the, the lock bar mm -hmm. is covered up with your blade face, that, that contact point, or you can talk about the blade. And, and it's not normalized out in the community, so each guy might be talking about two different things. Here we're talking about how much percentage of that blade thickness is your lock bar going over. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so if you had an eighth inch blade, your lock bar is going over a 30 second, right? Yeah, 16. Six, uh, well, 16 would be half. Well, 50% would be yeah, half. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Excuse blade, me, excuse right? me, yeah. And then a yeah. quarter would be yeah. a, uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and like I said, uh, Five years ago, I built my first one. It's still at the same lockup, you know. So it's just, it's just what your customers like and what you need. To, you gotta, gotta tailor it for them. I There's guess. There's a lot you of know? guys out there in the net that really criticize the amount of lockup. Oh, so it's, I've never seen it's, lock wear out. No, use. no, yep. I never have either. So if you got an eighty percent lockup, it ain't gonna hit ninety. No, <laughs> I've never seen that. Chris Reeve, everybody knows Chris Reeve knives. Every one of Chris Reeve knives is 70 to 80 percent lockup. Every one of them, aren't they, Tracy? They're safe. Yeah, they're 70, and, and that's where they stay. You think it, you think it looked like, man, I ain't got nothing left there for the lock bar to go over. A carbonized but, lock bar mm -hmm. isn't going to wear. Would a raw lock bar, unbaked, uncooked, un, uncarbonized, is that going to wear? Yeah. So you, titanium absolutely will wear out quick. Oh, extremely. It Fast. will it will gald and smear and it will yes. You can watch it. I mean, yeah. Just when you're building and if you don't have a carbonizer mm -hmm. you're hardened you, and you're going back and forth you'll eat it out. you'll you'll see it move. Yep. Yep, yep. you'll you will definitely So carbonize early in the Yeah, process. exactly. Yep. Yep. And like and like I said, the power sources and stuff like that, those those are relatively cheap. You can and you that's can find the those same source that you would anodize your Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so you can kind of do two things at once. But like I said, if you can get standard carbonizers as well. Five nine volt batteries will work. Okay. There you go, yeah, yeah. Everybody's got their own way of doing it. Yep. 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 That's I run mine forty, so yeah, yep, yep. So um usually a little dead. batteries, So now pretty much You've got all the hard stuff done. Now it's the gravy. Grinding it. Yeah, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry, just before we go any further. Yeah. You talked about how how stiff it is initially until you break it in. Mm -hmm. Do you break it in before it goes to the customer? Yes, I do. I always break in my knives because I I want to know I, I'm very particular on my actions. I do this is this is one of the only knives I've ever built on bearings. Because it's an integral and that's just how I want to set it up. But I do all my own washers. And uh, that's just what I prefer. I just prefer the, the feel of a washer knife. And it needs to feel like glass on glass with a washer knife. Uh, that's what it needs. And I always like to set to break mine in before it goes to the customer. That, that way, because some guys will never bother them a bit. They'll break them in themselves. You know, n no, no big deal. You're going to sit and do that yeah. for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Just Especially on a washer. Go back and forth. Bearings, you you know yeah. uh, but but a washer you're gonna sit and do that and you may torque it a bit like mm -hmm. that and just and you'll get that war in and put a little oil in the detent hole because that detent ball is really dragging across there I always put a little drop in the detent hole yep. in the blade yep. to help there not on the lock face some will get on there it won't kill you but you're gonna sit and do that for quite a while until it smooths up. Mm -hmm. I'll take it home yeah. some nights and sit there and watch TV. I do this for hours. Yeah, <laughs> I it, mean, it just takes it, a while. Some, some of them just do, and you can. And some guys run uh, Nylatron washers or, or uh, Teflon washers. Those things work great. You know, th there's nobody's. <laughs> that you ain't gonna wear them out. But their bench made knives is 30 years old that still got same Teflon washers in them. You know, it's just a mind thing. You know, I guess you feel better about putting phosphor bronze in versus some kind of piece of plastic. But you know, it, it's it's whatever you want to do. Um, is Teflon machinable? Teflon? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, some some, some guys, you know, they make their own washers. They won't even buy them. They make their own. You know, I I buy my own. <laughs> I I don't have time to be making twenty thousand washers. You know, um, is there any questions? Can I? Does anybody got any questions as of right now on anything process of this? Of everything we've talked about, what do you think is the most important place to start at for most of us who haven't made them? We have never made a folder, so. Okay. Easiest, the easiest way to start out, get a pattern. Find you a knife you like. To find you a frame lock you like or a liner lock, take it apart, copy it. Copy the knife. Then once you do that, start, make, then build it. Build it. Build another one after that. That's how you get good. Then once, once you have that copy, then you can build off the mechanics. Mechanics are there. They're proven. So build off the mechanics draw your own knife around those mechanics then you know the, the mechanics are there that's the hard part you know because you can you can draw up man the coolest knife you've ever seen but then it sounds good in theory until you go to make it and then it just some figure, figuring out that triangle uh-huh it don't work forward. right you know it's some th sometimes get one at the gas station for two bucks yeah yeah i mean yep. Yeah, so copy it. Copy that three-point geometry, and that's, after you do a couple, you won't need that anymore. Yes. But it's a cheap pattern. That's the easiest, the easiest thing to do to start out. You know, if you're not versed in knife designing and folders and stuff like that, copy one. What about kits? Kits. That's a great way to do. Yep, kits. Yes. You have some kits, don't you, Tracy? Tracy's got kits. We've got several kits, yep. and then I'll do. I do drill templates. I do a little yes. bit different than him. He he. And it's it, it's changed my life. So uh, I'll talk about that a little yeah, bit this afternoon. Yeah. So like I said, you know, we have, I, this is my own way of doing it. He has his own way of doing it. And like I said, you guys might take some of this. You might like some of this and take some of his, you know, and put them together. So um, it, there is, there is, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, one, one thing, you know, it's, if you've never had to teach yourself, you find your own ways of doing it versus when you get taught something, if, you run into something you don't they didn't show you yes you're like what do I I don't even know what to do now so just you know think outside the box and you'll, you'll make it work you'll find a way to do it just think outside the box you know and gonna, so you look at all the equipment I got over here right and then uh, everyone's well I can't make it because I don't have all that you, yeah, can. you can every knife maker folder guy that I know started off with like a drill press. I did I had a drill press that's all and, I had was a, a drill press stone. Yep. And after that, just I measuring did. tools, you get them at Harbor Freight, they work good enough. You, you know, your target is a half a thou tolerance, and that's, you, that's your life. You live for a half a thou. Mm -hmm. That's where yep. you want to be. You know, you get anything over a thou, you got issues, but it's not as hard after the first five. First five are going to suck. Okay? Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be bad. They're not going to be good. Their blades are going to be off-centered. They're, they're not going to be that good. They're, they're, just, they're just not, but that's how you learn, you know. Let's see your first knife. How yeah. good does that stack oh, up yeah. to what you're doing now? Yeah, exactly. You know, when I started out, I was just making fixed blades. I never thought I could even dream of making something like this. But, you know, keep pushing yourself, and you, you can do it. For a uh, uh, liner block. Yes. I use 70 thou. Whenever I go to build a liner lock, I, I use 70 thou uh, all the time. And generally, for the most part, I never have to relieve for the liner, for, for, for the lock. When I use 70 thou, just because my lock bar links and everything, I generally never have to relieve that. Okay. If so I do, it ain't the much. Lock, you're dropping it down to, um, 50 thousand basically frame lock on the frame lock yep. but on a liner you pretty much yeah it's it's kind of weird yeah, i don't know it just it depends it, on the length yeah the your, length depends upon the length of your lock, lock bar, bar. Okay. and and thickness mm -hmm. width yeah. hot width so yeah. it all depends you're going to just and your test is your thumb yeah. you know it's too tight or, or it kicks over your blade like they do if it's got too much tension you relieve it, but everyone's going to be different. Every model you make is going to be Absolutely. a little bit different. Everyone's going to feel I different. I shoot for yeah. around 55 okay. thou, but I also kind of want three quarters of a square inch relief. And that's just, in my head, that's how I picture it. Now, if I've got a real short knife, i gotta, I got to relieve about along the whole length of that lock bar just to get that flexibility. And then when I heat mm -hmm. it to bend the bar, I'll put a radius in that instead of a, a square 
bend. I'll try and round that over so I get a bend along the whole length of that lock bar, but it depends on the length of the lock bar, the thickness, the height of that lock bar, yeah. and it's trial and error. But shoot for at least 55 relief, and then I've got some relief down to 40 thou on a small one, but I used 80 thou liners, yeah. and, but it was really short, and that's the only way I, you I mean, now you had to use a screwdriver otherwise, so. I got one like that. I go back and, and, and <laughs> I bet every fourth knife I go back and relieve a little bit more on the, I start tight, and then if I gotta relieve it more, I'll go back and take more off. Can you guys touch on the height of the lock bar? You know, the, the how, you know, where you cut your, your, your slit, how thick, how, how thick is, should this be? Um, that's, you, that's not, uh, that's an eighth, well, yeah, three I mean, three sixteenths of an inch probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So three sixteenths here uh, at the face, cause you're only catching down at the, 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 the top, the yep. top. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, but three, so three sixteenths is really what you're looking for here. You're a little better, you're a quarter. Yeah, probably a quarter there, like but you know, probably three sixteenths and, and that thickness right there. Mm -hmm. But you're talking, that's hundred and probably right. 56 thou right there. So. And then back here, mm -hmm. that also is gonna determine, cause that's determined how tight that's gonna be. Um, yep. and, yeah, and your height back here, that's gonna determine a lot of how much you're gonna have to relieve that. Cause you're talking way more right. surface area of titanium. Yeah. So, one, so, so um, like, you're going to take and you're going to push down and you're going to look and see if your bar flexes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your first prototype on a, on a model, if you can torque it, try to close it, and if that flexes, go bigger. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. Just, yeah. that's just it. Yep. And so, but, you know, a lot of guys will make these with 40 thou liners mm -hmm. and you can flex it and that's good and then they're getting 800 bucks. So, you know, uh, I like them stiffer. I mean, I just, I don't want that to bend. should do that all day. Yep. And uh, one other thing, your stick out of your, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was just curious if you had any tips or tricks for fixturing these things in the milling machine, <coughs> like how you're holding them to the machine, you know, with the line, uh, line, for example. Machine, machine what? Well, like, you, okay, yes. I don't know if you told it in the same order, but when you talked about it, you had done this slit before machine. Yep, yep. The, the, that, 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 that is just a squeeze down in a vise. I'll, I'll squeeze that down in a vise. I'll put, uh, these are 16th inch holes here, mm -hmm. and I'll put two 16th inch bits through there. You can just set it right down on top of your vise. You know, you can, and then you, it's everything's perfectly square at that point. Tighten up your vise in. When you go to when you go to start doing reliefs and stuff like this. But don't you get chatter from this being free? Huh? No. Be, be, no, you don't because this is still attached here. That's not that that that's not cut. That's yet. not cut yet. Okay. That's not cut yet. You cut your long cut first and then cut this cut last. But then, like with reliefs, as far as work holding this stuff. Find some fixtures, find work holding fixtures, you know, just a six by six plate with holes drilled through it. You know, you can, you can find them off eBay or make your own or whatever. You That's the. CNC or Sanders Machine Works has this just great six by eight fixture plate that's drilled for quarter 20, yep. uh, quarter 20 screws. On so one side you can run quarter inch dowel pins mm -hmm. in, and then it's got partial thread engagement. The other side is full thread engagement. Yep. Dowel pins. Yep. yep. That's probably how I would put it. Just with what I have. Right. That's, that's interesting. Okay, but then like as far as like if you get going into doing like liner locks and stuff like that, I have a mirror jig. What it is. And so I can put both frames up here or doing bolster locks. So I can put both frames right there and I've got locating pins all over and they're tapered. They're tapered holes. And I can put in there uh, for three thirty second pins. And I can set these up and they'll be perfectly the same thing across there and I can go and mill everything out and they're perfect every time. It's dead, dead nuts, but it's called a mirror jig. Okay. And you do it all manually? Yes, I, I run Bridgeport Mill and I got a old fray all angle mill that I run. Um, I, I enjoy the manual machining aspect of knife making. I enjoy, I enjoy machining, I really do. Um, uh, and then pocket clips. They're the worst ever. I hate pocket clips. I wish I didn't have to make them. I despise <laughs> pocket clips. 
Um, but I'm finally slowly uh, starting to like them a little better now. Um, pocket clips, they, they do. Um, they have to be perfect. A pocket clip is the biggest thing besides the lockup and action. If that pocket clip doesn't have that this nice kind of push in and then kind of no pocket ripper, that's going to be something you're just going to have to play with yourself to figure out how you want your pocket clips to look. I don't do clips like this anymore. Um, let's see, I do all my clips now. They're all a sculpted contoured clip. They're all radius contoured. I grind everything from the inside versus these where I would just straight machine the inside like this and they'd stick out prominent where these are a more sleek um, clip yes yes these are not bent at all no these are not bent I grind them how I want want them to the shape a lot more labor intensive but they fit in your hand better you, they don't uh, you don't get that white mark after you use your use your knife a little bit um, so those are th that's something you'll just have to learn for yourself see what you like what what fits what fits your knives um, there's no rhyme or reason to them I use both. I use some of ours, or I'll I, make a custom one if I'm lazy. Carbon fiber. Carbon one, fiber makes a great it. clip. It's light, uh -huh. lightweight, yeah. easy to, and it's easy to work. Carbon fiber is easy to grind. Carbon. I mean, I've I've made a bunch of carbon fiber clips. They work great. Uh, as far as hardware, I use titanium hardware all the time. That's what I and use. Um, screws. It's whatever you want to use. There's a million screw makers out there. They get there's something for everybody 90% of folders are 256 yep screws. that's what I use some guys if you like that bigger kind of look that tank you know kind of style might use 440s maybe just you know but I use 256s on everything one big thing when you go to work with titanium and drill it a 256 screw will tell you you need a number 50 drill bit before you tap it don't do it because as soon as you get ready to tap it you'll get one thread and you'll snap it off in there use a number 48 bit for 256 screws because yes sir you use thread forming taps or uh, thread cutting taps? I use thread forming taps is what I use with a thread forming tap you need to go down to a 47 with a thread forming tap um, but a standard plug tap use a number 48 um, I recently just got a tapping machine but I tapped everything until now by hand no fixtures just three-handed it's a Hamilton. It was built back in the 50s. It's on, and it's it's a unique. It's on drive cones, and so it's got a drive cone that comes out, drive cone here, and a drive cone here. So you move your work table up. The spindle doesn't go, and it goes up. And then whenever you release, it hits on the other cone and self-releases. And you can control the torque by your hand because the drive cone is on a got a fibrous material. You can slip it. So that was definitely a game changer for me. Cause, uh, and the only way, if you bust one in titanium, uh, it's fine. You're just going to be down about a day and a half. Throw, throw it in a bucket of ferric chloride and go do something else. Start another one. Yeah, 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 yep, 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 absolutely. Yep, but throw it in there and it, it'll eat it away and it won't mess with your titanium at all. So, um, Anybody have any other questions? Yeah, Jeb. Good. Okay. Well, anybody else have any questions? All right. Well, guys, I hope you took something from this, and and uh, thank you. Appreciate it.